I'm William Hall with Resist the Mainstream. And Anheuser-Busch has now fired back after the whole Dylan Mulvaney video where he finally spoke out, calling out what was going on, sharing his feelings on the matter. But before we get into the story, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel as it helps us out here, helps us grow, helps our videos reach more people, more people seeing the truth. So go ahead and do that, and let's go ahead and jump into this video. So let's go ahead and start right off. So basically, like I said, Anheuser-Busch now has come out and made a statement, kind of a rebuttal, fires back at Dylan Mulvaney uh, as a result of the video that he put up. If you don't recall what the video specifically was, go ahead and check it out here. Hi. One thing I will not tolerate people saying about me is that I don't like beer because I love beer and I always have. Um, I built my platform on being honest with you and what I'm about to tell you might sound like old news, but you know that feeling when you have something uncomfy like sitting on your chest? Well, that's how I feel right now. So this feels like the right thing to do. I took a brand deal with a company that I loved and I posted a sponsored video to my page and it must have been a slow news week because the way that this ad got blown up, you would have thought I was like on a billboard or on a TV commercial or something major, but no, it was just an Instagram video. And the wildest part is that they also sent me one can with my face on it. You might have seen it. And funny story, I had the can around my house but then I realized, wait, I need to protect this can. So I hid it somewhere and now I can't find it because I hid it so well. But when I do find it, I feel like it needs to go in a museum, preferably behind bulletproof glass. And you might be thinking, Dylan, why bring it up now? I, I'm bringing it up because what transpired from that video was more bullying and transphobia than I could have ever imagined. And I should have made this video months ago, but I didn't. And I was scared and, and I was scared of more backlash and, and I felt personally guilty for what transpired. So I patiently waited for things to get better, but surprise, they haven't really. And, and I was waiting for the brand to reach out to me, but they never did. And for months now, I've been scared to leave my house. I have been ridiculed in public. I've been followed and I have felt a loneliness that I wouldn't wish on anyone. And I'm not telling you this because I want your pity. I am telling you this because if this is my experience from a very privileged perspective, know that it is much, much worse for other trans people. For a company to hire a trans person and then not publicly stand by them is worse in my opinion than not hiring a trans person at all because it gives customers permission to be as transphobic and hateful as they want and, and the hate doesn't end with me. It has serious and grave consequences for the rest of our community. And, and you know, we're customers too. I know a lot of trans and queer people who love beer. And I have some lesbian friends who could drink some of those haters under the table. But to turn a blind eye and pretend everything is okay, it just isn't an option right now. And, and you might say, but Dylan, I, I don't want to get political. Babe, supporting trans people, it shouldn't be political. There should be nothing controversial or divisive about working with us. And, and I know it's possible because I've worked with some fantastic companies who care, but, but caring about the LGBTQ plus community requires a lot more than just a donation somewhere during Pride Month. And all this to say, bottom line, is that if you follow me, if I've made you smile, if you care about me, I need you to care about every trans person and I need you to support us, and I need you to stand by us. And, and hey, it's still Pride Month, so um, I'm gonna celebrate being alive, and I'm gonna celebrate the trans people in my life and the ones I haven't met yet, and I'm going to celebrate the fact that no matter how many thousands of horrible messages or news anchors misgendering me or companies going silent, that I can look in the mirror and see the woman that I am and that I love being. And, and I know you were probably here for the tea of it all, um, but I would love for something productive to come from this. So there is a link in my bio to the Trans Law Center who is doing some wonderful work if you have the means to donate. And to the good people out there, I love ya. I really do. And um, cheers, but only if you're of legal drinking age. Okay, I love you. Bye. All right, so keep in mind, Anheuser-Busch lost 
20 billion dollars right as a result of this ridiculous marketing campaign that was supposed to be sponsoring and, and kind of having this person having his face on this bottle or on the can on the beer can and everything i mean this this was a major financial hit 20 billion dollars is not chump change for any organization even anheuser-busch so the brewing giant responded in a statement saying com they are committed to the programs and partnerships that they have forged over decades with organizations across a number of communities, including those in the LGBTQ plus community. So, you know, they didn't even mention his name. They didn't say anything about that at all. They kind of just released this very generic statement, but it's all coming after this whole incident has been taking place where basically he was trying to claim in the video that they, they didn't care. They didn't do all this stuff. I mean, keep in mind, they, they're still a woke company. I still don't think they fully have learned from the mistakes of the past, from the clear and obvious response from the consumers. We don't want this to happen. We only want companies to be companies, to actually focus on making money instead of dealing with all of this ridiculous po political stuff that doesn't fit anywhere. I mean, they, they literally just threw their entire actual target demographic out. And now they're reaping the, re the repercussions of that. And that's what happens, right? That's corporate America. That's what they do. So Anheuser-Busch statement comes a couple of days after uh, it denied firing their uh, this Alyssa uh, Heinerschneld, I guess is how you pronounce her name or uh, whatever it is. But it's basically her market or their marketing executive that Bud Light actually had. This was the, the, the woman that actually spearheaded this entire situation with Dylan Mulvaney, that the one whose bright idea it was to basically do this this woke ad campaign and have him put up all these videos and do the face on this on the can and everything, it just all that ridiculousness. She winds up leaving, and then they figure out later, hey, you know what? They probably actually fired her. I mean, that's the reality that comes down the pipeline here. I think there was even a, a few videos where she had put up talking about the fact that that was her idea, that she wanted to do it, that you know we really wanted to get into this community community and show that this beers for them too. Well. What you want up doing is basically denying everyone else. You deny everyone else that's actually a part of this of the actual de target demographic, the people that actually drink your beer. Those are the ones that are going to be most affected by this type of stuff. So Bud Light's numbers were actually at their lowest point, um, currently at their lowest point since the controversy broke. So their sales for the week down uh, for the week down was actually twenty eight point five percent from a year ago. So that's a massive decline in in market share in in people actually buying this product. And what's going to happen is that a lot of these stores are now going to see way less sales. So they're going to stop basically stocking these in here or these stores basically because they, they lose money. Because the way that this works is that everything is very delayed when it comes down to products that companies release. Because effectively stores and gas stations or whoever is stocking this beer, basically they immediately pay for all of the stuff that they feel like they're going to be able to sell. Now that that's changed where they can say, hey, we're selling 50% less beer or whatever the percentage is of decline, those stores now are going to order less beer and therefore Bud Light makes less money as a result. So this this takes time and now we're seeing the real re repercussions of this and it's going to, going to continue to stack on, continue to happen as less and less beer sells, as companies lose faith in the brand. And, and that's what's really taking place here is that it is making a, a big difference and it's causing not only Bud Light, but many other companies as well to kind of pay attention, especially even though, you know, Pride Month here is basically ended. We're still we still saw a bunch of companies say, hey, look, we're going to hold back a little bit. We're going to hold off. Let's take a step back. Let's kind of uh, take our time. Let's not go full woke this time because we saw what the reaction was. We don't want to lose 20 billion dollars as well. Right. Um, because all it's going to take is a company that actually cares about its target audience that's actually going to succeed and take that number one spot from these other woke companies out there. So uh, Whitworth, which is the uh, CEO of Anheuser-Busch, said, just to be clear, it was a gift and it was one can. And it was referring to the can that had its face on it, right? Because that was one of the things that was kind of making the, the headlines was this Bud Light can they had here. And and, and the, on the top of the rim of the can, uh, you can check it out in this picture here, it says, cheers to 365 days of, uh, I think it said girlhood, which is just ridiculous, right? I mean, it's just an absolute lie. and <laughs> just an absolute, it's just ridiculous that they even thought that this was a good idea, right? So Anheuser-Busch's 65,000 employees have uh, also felt the, bl the blunt force of this backlash with many being ridiculed, harassed off as one of the uh, I, one once iconic brand, you know, and now it's gone, right? I mean, there, there's no more of this actual beer uh, brand being held to a high regard, a high standard as his number one company. It's not there anymore, right? So Mulvaney uh, mentioned in the video that there's more bullying and transphobia than, you know, that he could ever have imagined. 
since posting the video. But the reality is, is that I think they knew what was going on, right? If they knew it was popular, why would they try to do this? This was this is these people that are in corporate America, especially in marketing throughout all of these companies, are so delusional. They think for some reason that this is going to sell them more beers. It's not going to do that, guys. Like, right? You have a target demographic. Bud Light, no, they're a huge company. They know who their target demographic is. So when you go in this opposite direction, you are denying every single thing there. And they are now dealing with the consequences of doing that. So let me know down in the comments. What do you think about this uh, uh, Bud Light's response, Anheuser-Busch's response? In other words, uh, let us know. Uh, do you think that this was a good response? Uh, I mean, how do you feel about them basically making a generic statement but not even mentioning his name at all? And, and, and what do you think... Uh, is going to happen going forward with uh, other companies. Is this going to have a massive effect? Are they going to continue to decline? Or is this something where maybe it's just temporary? Let us know down in the comments what you think. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, as well as it helps us out here. But with that being said, we'll catch you on the next one.